Good morning. So this is a little bit late. I've been trying to do a couple of videos, but uh, leading into the holidays, my work schedule has just been uncooperative to say the least. So I wanted to do a bit of uh, a mixed video here because obviously oh, crap. I'm playing in virtual reality since that update dropped with 1.12.13.0. I downloaded it the day it came out and I only oh, no, just actually. got a chance to actually play it. So I'm flying it in a group session with my nephew. He's the guy talking uh, in the background. I forgot to reset my recording software so that it would pick up off of my headset instead of my headset mic, which wasn't <laughs> anywhere near me at the time. So that's why you can't hear my voice communicating back to him, unfortunately. I'll try to pay more attention to that last uh, next time, but I have to re reset all my audio and camera settings now what you're seeing is what the game is outputting you're not actually seeing what I'm seeing essentially those two sunglass looking things are the actual screens that are being rendered in each eye so you kind of mix the two together and you get one central image through the IPD settings and everything on the system but it is a very different and good experience to be flying in virtual reality. It totally changes the way the game feels. There's a lot of bugs and there's a lot of problems right now, but oh man, when it comes together, it is really, really nice to be able to sit there in that plane like you're sitting there in that plane and fly. And that's why you can see I'm flying from the cockpit now because I am confident in what I'm seeing in my altitude from the ground and what I'm doing. If I need to see over the cowl a little bit, I can just sit up and suddenly my head can poke forward and I can see out. If I need to look at one of my controls for a second, I can just move my head right up to that control and take a look. It is such a good experience to be flying in VR versus the other method. Now, the downside is I lose a bit of my uh, field of view because these, uh, at least the HP Reverb G2, does not have a super wide field of view compared to my triple monitor setup that can show me so much more information. But I can turn my head, I can lean, I can look over the window, and it's it's just so nice to be able to turn around and actually look behind me and see what's going on. Now, the bugs I mentioned are the plane and the cockpit and the menus. I'll show the menus a bit later, um, but right now what you're seeing is kind of the composite overlay and just kind of a final output render. It looks a little bit different in the headset, so the cockpit is basically superimposed upon the rest of the world's views. I get buzzed by my nephew there. Um, so the cockpit has a different FPS to what the rest of the world does. Now it doesn't look like it here, it really does in the headset. So my cockpit had maybe 15 <laughs> to 20 FPS right here in the middle of nowhere flying by Yosemite. <laughs> But when I was flying in Paris, it had like a 5 to okay, 10 FPS, and it was garbage. As soon as I tried to move my head at all, it was you couldn't read the, the cockpit. It was terrible. But the rest of the world flew by very smoothly at a nice FPS and was very usable. So we came out somewhere remote, and it was a lot better. The experience was so much better. So I'm really hopeful they get that done a little very better. Fun and very quick way to the climb. other funky thing is the mouse kind of changes its angles and, and displays because you can't use the VR controllers to actually grab and interact with the cockpit yet. Maybe they will in the future. But for now, you still have to use the controller and your keyboard mouse. So you kind of have to know where everything is around you to be able to grab it basically blind and, and use that as your hands and feet. But it works pretty decently. All the problems that I had flying externally trying to grab the controls and turn the knobs, I didn't really experience any of that. So I'm here making a left bank in some pretty decently windy conditions, but the weather seemed to be impacting the plane in mostly a normal way. Um, I was able to actually control it and, and do what I wanted to. I was able to mess with the autopilot. I'm flying a caravan, which I flew in my last video, and I had a lot of issues flying the caravan then. And this time I really didn't experience many issues. I had a slight rudder problem where the rudder was just extended full right almost from autopilot but other than that the plane was doing fine one thing I did notice which is great news I didn't see it specifically listed in the patch notes when I scrolled through but I did go into the menus and I made my standard setting change of uh, putting left rudder on the rudder axis and leaving right rudder assigned to just the rudder and when I went into play, I had full, proper rudder control. So I'm going to go back in and mess with the settings on this and see if they really did change something in here because I actually had proper rudder control. It wasn't an instant on. Now, I didn't 
see if I held the trigger or the right trigger long enough if it would slowly just extend all the way to the right and they just slowed it down because now in the sensitivity you can control the sensitivity of your triggers for that rudder control. I don't know if it's associated with that but I was able as you can sort of see here on this approach run some crabbing. Um, the wind was coming from my right a little bit in front of me so you can see I'm doing a tiny bit of crabbing here not a lot, but I am doing a little bit of crabbing, and it worked. I wasn't holding the, the rudder down for long. I was just kind of tapping it because the rudder does cause a lot of roll, and I was having enough issues trying to, to, to deal with the uh, ground coming up because in the plane, I had the glitch where my flaps wouldn't work. I had to hold the flaps button to get them to extend to the first 15, and then they would automatically retract as soon as I let go of the button. My nephew buzzed me, and then since I have to come in at full throttle, essentially, <laughs> I caught him up and I surprised him a little bit there, which I thought was kind of funny. Now, the menus in this are pretty lame. You're stuck in this Butter little yeah, holodeck-style environment from Star Trek with a flat page in front of you, which I get. That's fine. It works. Oh, but geez. the menus are not as stable as your head, so as you move your head at all they jitter and bounce around so you can see what i'm seeing here as it loads and you can see the garbage fps that you get sometimes and then suddenly it's smooth and then it chops and then it's smooth and then it's choppy but the goal is to keep your head as steady as possible because it's hard to see here but the actual window of everything is moving around like it's changing pixels five to six pixels up down left right all over the place and it really wigs your eyes out and that's kind of what the cockpit and everything does when it drops down to low fps because again it's rendered on top of the rest of the environment and you're kind of stuck in there but it, yeah it, it was kind of a terrible experience the, on that uh, but uh, we were coming out here to do see if we could do a grand canyon run so i was going to pick a little biplane and just have some fun with it unfortunately there's still some bugs on that front but the menu layout works i wish they would choose a better background i think it should be i think that the the menu should be more stabilized to your head because eesh, it was it was i didn't get sick but i could see how it would be very nauseating for somebody who does because your head uh, is not moving the way the menus are moving and everything kind of bounces around so bit annoying but overall for a first implementation at least the flight experience once you kind of get it working is phenomenal it's a game changer being able to sit there and look down at the seat at your feet and lean forward and kind of peer up over the cowl and turn to your left and see your wings starting to ice up and then lean in and grab the controls now what i noticed about the biplane is how claustrophobic it is <laughs> because it's really really tight and you've seen it if, if you've ever been to an air, sh uh, air show or anything you've seen how tight it is but through the hp reverb g2 which this game was very tailored for in this vr experience it is so crisp and clear in these dials i can read everything and this one on the left that i just leaned into if you mix the two images and kind of stick your face right up on the screen you get how it how big it was for me I could lean in and read those mini dials that were on the side. Yes, you can also stick your head out of the cockpit, but it's just the way it works. But, oh, it was so nice to be able to lean in and read those dials, find my autopilot controls. Really Downside was, if you don't know the cockpit layout, because one of the first flights we did was at night oh, in Paris, boy. I couldn't find the controls to turn the brightness up. And uh, usually on my monitors, it, it displays enough that I can see where the knobs are but in this I couldn't do it. So we're coming up on the Grand Canyon here with the Hoover Dam Bridge. And we were just uh, playing, he was in an extra and I was in the biplane and we were both r remiss at the lack of controllability because uh, I had tried to do a barrel roll, I had tried to fly inverted, and again, you have to overcompensate to stop yeah, the barrel roll. that's one thing that I noticed. Like, if you do a tight turn, you try to stop, you have to really force it back the other way. As my nephew just said, we were discussing that, and it was garbage. Because I tried to do, like, a, a quarter roll, I couldn't do it. It just became a full barrel roll because the plane just continued to roll even though I wasn't holding controls anymore. So they still have some things to fix on that front that make these smaller planes really mm, not very fun to fly. But what we were also commenting on is being able to look up in these open canopies was a real nice thing. Now, I have a headrest on my uh, chair here, which made it a little hard, so I couldn't look up as high as I wanted to. I didn't even realize that your plane was blue until... But he's going to fly over my head here, and in, there he goes, initiate a loop under this bridge. And if you remember when the American pack first released, I had a problem doing some of this. So we go up into the loop. There I go looking up. There I am hitting the chair, so I lean forward a bit. 
look up higher, can see him flying around under the bridge. And then he trips out, and then I come down and bonk right into an invisible bridge. So they still have a lot of problems with that, but I'm sure if I turned collisions off, I'd be able to fly through it or something like that, which is what I'm going to end up doing because the way the game kills you a lot of the time is just not realistic. But anyway, I wanted to cover that real quickly about the menus, about the semi-fixed rudder control, and give you kind of a preview of VR. It's a little hard to represent in videos like this, but oh man, is it a totally different game to fly in VR. And then we'll come back on the rudder controls in another video as well. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.